Please note the disclaimer. Cartoon Network was my absolute favourite channel to watch growing up. I mean, sometimes the cartoons were B-grade and pretty forgettable. But occasionally, we got those creative, timeless cartoons. These are the cartoons I find myself re-watching even to this day, and often they still bring me a laugh and a smile. So today, I'd like to take a look back at the last 23 years of Cartoon Network shows, and list what I personally consider the top 10 best Cartoon Network shows of all time. We'll be looking at both the old Cartoon Network and the new Cartoon Network, or CN as they call it today. Number 10. Courage the Cowardly Dog. Looking back at them now, many of these cartoon cartoons have not aged well since I first saw them when I was eight. Courage, however, felt like stepping back into a refreshing breeze. It's just as fast-paced, quirky, creepy, and funny as when I first watched it. Watching Courage when I was eight was one of the first times I remember feeling genuinely disturbed watching a cartoon. Courage left me laughing, but it also had a way of leaving me feeling very unsettled. How to get rid of evil shadows. One pleasant conversation. There was a real sense of atmosphere to these settings. The colors were this strange contrast of bleak yet alien. It really added to the sense of mystery in this show. The basic story is that Courage is, well, a dog that lives out in the middle of nowhere with his two elderly owners. But there is some major bad mojo or curses or aliens or something going on in this house because Courage can make the Twilight Zone look tame. I put Courage on the list because when I look back at all the cartoon cartoons, this one really left a remarkable impact on me. Some of my strongest memories of Cartoon Network tend to be the creepy shots and scenes from this show. And I appreciate that it wasn't just following some standard cartoon formula. It didn't care if it was different. It didn't care if it was creepy or weird. I mean, the show rarely did happy endings. That's like a necessity for cartoons. Oh, there's Eustace with my slipper. Ah! Either way, this was a classic show from the early cartoon cartoon era, and I'd recommend giving it a look if you haven't already. And for number 9... Powerpuff Girls. Whenever I think cartoon cartoons, the first thing that pops into my head is Powerpuff Girls. I dare say it even encouraged some of the Adult Swim cartoon creators. It was a cartoon where I was often wondering, who is this appealing to? The sappy moments feel like they appeal to younger girls. Let's go, duck, duck, girls. But the frequent creepy imagery that just comes out of nowhere in this show seems like it's more appealing to... Demented teens? The majority of characters had so much personality and color, particularly the villains. Jeebus, I will never forget some of these villains. Uh, we were wondering... How oh, I stay so fit? <laughs> Where are you now? You're now. Mojo Jojo. You could do a freaking show on Mojo Jojo alone. One egg left. For a nutritious breakfast, two eggs is the minimum requirement, and I have but one, which is once I have two, and it is two that I need. In fact, he's often been Cartoon Network's host for shows. Then there's him, the Amoeba Boys, that banjo playing hillbilly, the mayor of town. Hell, even the narrator is overflowing with character. But the girls couldn't bear to tell you the naked truth. <laughs> oh, so once again... Oddly enough though, everyone has character except for the three main heroes, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup. Maybe the writers intended to do this, but I often just found myself waiting for Mojo Jojo or the Professor to come back on screen. To be honest, most of the time I found myself rooting for Mojo Jojo to win. There was even an awesome conclusion to the series where Mojo Jojo actually wins, and it turns out he saves the world before getting bored and blowing it up again. Powerpuff Girls is a show that began the cartoon cartoon onslaught. If you haven't at least seen that final episode before, it's called Powerpuff Girls Rule, I recommend you rent the DVD and check it out. It's definitely worth at least one watch. No, you know what? That's it, I'm done. Number eight. The Amazing World of Gumball. 
Some of the modern Cartoon Network shows we've got now really do feel like a product of the times. I just can't help but feel like they're pandering to a young team demographic half the time. But some of the shows just do their own thing, being innovative and not caring whether they're ticking the boxes for their demographic. The Amazing World of Gumball is just one of those shows. I'm probably way too old to be in the age group for this one, but this show always brims with so much charm and personality. The dialogue and characters just have a real charm to them that I just never felt in a lot of other modern Cartoon Network shows. Even the animation is like nothing I've ever seen before in cartoons. The show's animation is just this melting pot of every style you can think of. I really like how they'll often combine live-action backgrounds with CG characters, or even stop-motion footage over top. But somehow, they manage to make all these animation styles meld together perfectly. The most well-known episode is probably the second episode, the DVD. It's a good example of how the show always has a simple premise, but creates really fun adventures from something as trivial as breaking a rental DVD. This had better be a joke. Aw oh, man, what gave it away? Dude, it's five seconds long and every name in the credits is one of you two. I know I'm way too old for this one, but the characters, premise, and animation still make me laugh all the time. This is a show I definitely recommend to younger viewers. And older viewers. And chances are, I'll be checking out a few more episodes too. And for number seven... Team Titans. There was a time when Cartoon Network realized its current audience was growing up, so I guess to appeal to their now teenage demographic, they made Toonami. Teen Titans was what led this Toonami cartoon era. Teen Titans was what started that funny animation style that used anime-esque yet still very western-style animation. And I never felt like these shows were trying to rip off anime style. I felt like they were affectionately paying homage to the animes we loved growing up. Introducing that hint of brilliance that Japanimation has brought to our Western world in our own cartoons. The animators grew up with anime, and like many of us, they were inspired by it. Though perhaps some things maybe should have stayed in Japan. Why would you bring tentacles? Teen Titans itself has very memorable, pleasant characters. It really doesn't fit the general Cartoon Network mold, as it will sometimes dedicate an entire episode to character development. Don't get me wrong, it can be really cheesy and corny, but it feels like it's done intentionally. It does feel like it's trying to appeal to teenagers, but they created something unique and timeless in the process. Probably the episode I remember best is episode 6, Nevermore, where Beast Boy and Cyborg get sucked into Raven's mind, where we get a surprisingly in-depth exploration of Raven's inner psyche, and they become better friends for it. Honestly, I was glad to grow up alongside cartoon shows like this. Teen Titans got nominated for three animation awards, and I think it deserved all three. We got way more emotional depth out of Teen Titans than other shows that will not be mentioned. If you can find it, I recommend renting it and checking it out. For number six, Samurai Jack. This is one of the best examples of CG done well that I've ever seen. The animation doesn't just look choppy and ultra pixely. Hell, half the time it looks more like watercolors than it does CG. This show was designed from the bottom up to be completely off the wall and completely different. To be honest, I only watched this show once when I was a kid. But damn, 12 years later and I remember exactly the jokes that were used. Yes, yes, I will find it. Do not worry. You sure? No, no, don't worry. I remember now. I can give you a ride if you... I will find it! In a time when Cartoon Network shows were often B pluses at best, Samurai Jack stood out as a classic indie cartoon. The entire first episode is done with little to no vocals, yet it managed to tell the entire childhood story of Jack. Then, out of nowhere, Jack is suddenly thrown thousands of years into the future, and it turns out he's a time-traveling samurai. Well, that went insane very quickly. The art style is somewhere between minimalist and anime. It really shows that sometimes you don't need overcomplicated tapestries. Sometimes simple is better, and everything they need to convey can be seen with this minimal animation. 
If only for the constant bombardment of new colourful settings, funny jokes and amazing action scenes. I definitely recommend you give this show a look. And for number 5... Star Wars The Clone Wars. Many people probably know this, but Mark Hamill hasn't just disappeared for... 40 years since Return of the Jedi. He's actually been voice acting in brilliant cartoons like this one. And just look at a scene like this. Down to only one. I created a legacy so resilient that now you come before me. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, but a scene like that feels like it belongs way more in the Star Wars universe than some of the garbage we got in Episodes 1 to 3. These CG cartoons are set three years between Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, and Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Ironically, they're vastly more interesting, with far more likeable, interesting, and believable characters. The Clone Wars is another of those cartoons that just demonstrates how seriously the Western world can take its cartoons. The voice acting is dramatic, the animation is crisp, and the setting isn't just some throwaway Star Wars cash-in game. The Clone Wars truly does feel like it belongs in the Star Wars universe, and that's not an easy feat to achieve. Even for George Lucas, interestingly enough. It's really fast-paced, and it gives us one of the few good things we got from Episodes 1 to 3. Crisp, high-stakes, epic action scenes. But decent acting and story are also included. And since it's done in CG, there's no constant green screening to ruin the atmosphere. I personally think this is where Star Wars CG belongs. They say that George Lucas co-directed this show, but it fortunately feels like he had absolutely nothing to do with this show. It may not look as expensive as Episodes 1 to 3, but I think this is definitely a case of substance over Flash. With the resurgence of Star Wars thanks to good old Disney, I hope this show gets more attention. It's smartly written, it looks amazing, and it sends me right back to that Star Wars universe every time I watch it. And for number 4... Rick and Morty. Technically, Rick and Morty is Adult Swim, but personally I think it's the absolute best of Adult Swim. Besides, Adult Swim is Cartoon Network, it's just later at night. But I have already talked about it in previous videos, so I'll keep it brief. Adult Swim has had a lot of bad cartoons over the years, and I mean a lot. In fact, my absolute worst cartoons list has three titles that spawn from it, but Rick and Morty was the exception. As I mentioned before, this show is exceptionally creative, and at times, thought-provoking. I like its chaotic, unsettling themes, and I really like the main characters. And so far, I don't think they've given us a single bad episode. This show is just a rush. I recommend you watch Rick and Morty at least once, if only to witness its insanity. Number three. One, two, three, yeah! Johnny Bravo. Baby. This is a show I grew up with, and probably the only show on this list that I have watched on and off for over a decade. Regardless of what age I was at, whether I was a child, a teen, or an adult, Johnny Bravo has always made me laugh. And it made me laugh a lot. As you probably already know, Johnny's a 20-something egotistical superstar wannabe. Are you the blonde, macho, egotistical, swaggering, self-loving superstar wannabe? <laughs> what makes Johnny Bravo such a great show isn't the settings. It's purely the main character. Johnny Bravo is often used by Cartoon Network even to this day, because he is another of those wonderful characters that you can put anywhere. And the humour comes purely from watching how this personality reacts to wherever he's put. My favourite episode is probably Karma Crisis, where Johnny tears up a chain letter, and in the process, absolutely everything that could hurt him rains down on him. And I mean everything. Baseballs, storm clouds, cars, motorbikes, elephants, cows, houses. Hey look girls, it's Johnny Bravo! There is something endlessly entertaining about watching Johnny continually put through misfortune. Funnily enough though, I've never actually looked at who made these episodes. Let me take a look. Wait, 
What? Seth MacFarlane wrote this show? Yep, with a capital C. Seth MacFarlane helped write the classic Johnny Bravo? That's right. You know what? Good for him. While I don't like all of Seth's new stuff, this was one piece of writing he had his hands on that I truly enjoyed. Sadly, by season 3 and 4, the show had lost a lot of its magic, but those first two seasons were classics. I'd say go watch Johnny Bravo, but I reckon you probably already have. Who's that handsome guy? Hello, 911 emergency. There's a handsome guy in my house. Oh, <laughs> wait a second, cancel that. It's only me. And for number two... Adventure Time. Where to start with Adventure Time? The creativity, the vast, bizarre world, the characters, the depth of those characters as the series went on, the mystery of their world, the questions. I will say the characters start off a little cliche, but the further the series has gone on, the more those characters have gone from teen pandering cliches to fascinating characters who we want to learn more about. When I watch this show, I feel like I'm returning to an immersive alternate reality. And there's always these constant questions as I'm watching. What could what I just saw mean? Is that important? Why is the lich hiding in every single episode as a snail? The only drawback I've found as a series has gone on is that if I missed an episode, characters would often talk about some important plot point, and I'd have no idea what they're talking about. I mean, I missed two episodes? And the main villain, the Lich, has gone from an interdimensional horror of unimaginable powers to a seven-year-old schoolboy under the care of an 80-year-old elephant. But those are just nitpicks. The vast different settings, the character depth and creativity are continually astounding. We'll have an episode set in Candyland, the moon, Mars, an alternate dimension. Hell! N no, literally, hell. Yeah, one episode was set in hell. What is that? I think it's like sentient blood mist. Cool. By the later seasons, it can take some time to get your head around everything. But I cannot recommend this show enough. It's one of my absolute favorite cartoons. And what I consider the number one best Cartoon Network show of all time is... Steven Universe. Big surprise, huh? Out of all the Cartoon Network shows over the years, this is a show I always come back to time and again. It gives me a sense of human warmth that just always puts me at ease. Steven Universe is a world I always enjoy immersing myself in. Just enjoying the warmth of these wonderful characters. And despite the kindness and warmth this show has, I've never felt like it was pandering or talking down to anyone, not once. And I think that's part of what makes Steven Universe such a perfect show. It's always done its own thing, not caring what other shows are doing. And all the way through, it's managed to be a highly sophisticated yet simple cartoon. This is the show that somehow continues to melt my heart over and over in every new episode. It's the only cartoon that regularly makes me shed a tear. The songs are brilliant, the settings are brilliant, the colours are wonderful, the characters are relatable and they're likeable. Each song in this show is just a beautiful work of art. The main theme alone has this gentleness to it that can bring a tear to my eye. Steven Universe is just a show that allowed me to see the world in a slightly gentler light. And honestly, I don't care what the rest of the fan base is like. I just adore this show. I don't go into this show to analyze. I go into this show to feel my heartstrings pulled, to feel that energy of thrill and beauty. I'm sorry if I've gushed a bit, but this is what this show does to me. To me, there's very few cartoons that come even close to this show. I'm really glad I was introduced to it by commenters, and I thank you for that. It's one of those few shows that I can claim has enriched my heart. For these reasons and more, Steven Universe is my absolute favorite Cartoon Network show. And you know what? This came out in 2014. If that shows us anything, it shows that our cartoons aren't getting worse. It shows that our cartoons are getting better. I mean, we're regularly given amazing cartoons like Adventure Time, Rick and Morty, and Steven Universe. Given that Cartoon Network started with shows like Cow and Chicken and I Am Weasel, they have come a really long way. Do you think I missed a particular cartoon? Let me know in the comments. 
As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.